Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly uh, webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show and it is posted to our archives for you to watch at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the um, uh, topics we have on the show. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska who don't know, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries, uh, similar to like the state library and other states. So we provide services, training, consulting, um, support to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find things on our show for all types of libraries. So um, things for publics, K-12, academic schools, um, and universities, uh, corrections, museums, archives, uh, it runs all across the board. <laughs> our, really our only criteria is that is something to do with libraries, uh, something library related, something uh, we think libraries could we could be doing. Um, we bring in guest presenters from other libraries uh, from across Nebraska and across the country to talk about what they're doing in their libraries so we can share that information. So you'll find lots and lots of things on our show. Um, before we get into um, this morning's topic uh, with our presenter Amanda, I'm going to pop over to our Library Commission website and I've just been doing this reminder um, every week for our libraries and for anybody who joins us. Um, we are still in the height of the COVID-19 pandemic and it is getting worse at the moment, as everyone knows. So on our Nebraska Library Commission website, we have been attempting to collect resources and information to help our libraries in Nebraska um, handle the, what's going on with the pandemic in their libraries and for their patrons. Um, uh, these resources here are not limited just to Nebraska libraries. Anyone can use them. So if you're not from Nebraska, feel free to take a look. We're also attempting to keep a list of our libraries, mostly our public libraries, and what their situation is. Are they open? Are they closed? Uh, what special what accommodations are they make? Are they doing more Wi-Fi in the parking lot, curbside pickup, delivery, things like that? Um, now there's also um, reclosing of libraries. Many of our libraries across the whole country need to close down again due to surges. Um, new outbreaks in different areas. So uh, if you are a Nebraska library, um, reach out to us and let us know our uh, reference department if they to keep that list up to date. But at the top of our page here, we have a post that is always pinned to the very top of our website, our blog. So we'll always be there uh, for you to access on our, our, what our pandemic resources are. And we have a link to a form for libraries to submit us to us their um, information for Nebraska libraries. Some maps we've put together, um, but then there's a subpage here of all our pandemic resources. This is things that our reference staff has gathered and is keeping up to date. Uh, what about and how to apply for unemployment, financial help, what do I do with my kids in their home, things like that. But the second link here is all about libraries specifically. So information about closing down of libraries, how to reopen, um, helpful resources for reopening your library, uh, specific resources for school libraries. Um, we have in Nebraska an Open Meetings Act law that our um, library boards have to follow, so this is information about that. Um, now this is ex specifically to um, about Nebraska, so check your own state to see what your local laws are about open meetings. Um, other resources, health, et cetera, et cetera. So we do update this with new resources um, we find, and new information that comes out from um, CDC, World Health Organization, ALA, OCLC, all the acronyms. <laughs> um, anything that might be of use to libraries, if there's webinars that have been held, recordings of things. So I just wanna remind everyone that information is there. If you're not, if you're from Nebraska, if you're not from Nebraska, like I said, all this is free for you to, for your, you're welcome to click on it, um, pay attention to things that are Nebraska specific, however, um, but also check with your state library or your state library association, um, uh, uh, your school library associations, whatever. They may also be providing the same kind of resources. 
So now that we've gotten through that, let's get into today's show. I am going to hand over presenter control to you, Amanda, so we can get your screen up first. So you should see that pop up. And do you see my screen? Yep, I do. And it's at the choosing the equipment page. Is that the top of it or? Oh, yeah. right there. Okay. All right. So um, today on Encompass Live, it is the last Wednesday of the month. So that means it is pretty sweet tech day. <laughs> Um, Amanda Sweet is with us this morning. She is our Nebraska Library Commission's Technology Innovation Librarian. And once a month, uh, most of the time, the last Wednesday of the month, she comes on to talk to us about something tech related. So if you are the techie person in your library or that's what you're interested in, in techie stuff, uh, this is definitely the show for you. Um, the episode for you to show for. Uh, we talk about technology and other days too, other um, shows too, but definitely when Amanda comes to join us. And today we're going to learn out how to do podcasting, um, to teach others to do it or start one for your own library, whichever. So um, I'm just going to let you take it away, Amanda, and tell us all about everything we need to know about podcasting. Okay. So there are almost more podcasts now than blogs, and I'm skeptical of that statement, but it's getting there. <laughs> <laughs> it is becoming more the, the popular thing to do, yeah. It is true. And so if you don't know what a podcast is, it's basically sort of like the new radio show, but it's all broadcast online so listeners can listen to a podcast station pretty much anytime they want to. And some popular places to look for podcasts are Spotify and iTunes or the Apple Place or the Apple Store. And you can basically there's a podcast for pretty much every subject known to man. Like it's just everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I will click open the seven most common podcast formats to give you an idea of what you're getting into. So I'll scroll down here, and this guy from Medium, he really knows his stuff. He mm -hmm. dug into the, he researched and dug into the main categories so that you know more or less what you want to start planning and what you might want to try. So the most popular version of a podcast is the one-on-one -on -one interview style, and that's sort of what, somewhat what Krista and I are doing right now, but just in audio form. So mm -hmm. you would have one host that would start asking questions and then you would have an interviewee that is start starting to answer some great questions about a popular topic. And that one is sort of similar to the solo commentary, which would just be me talking at you. And the solo commentary is an easier podcast to get started with because it's also easier to edit because it's just one person's vocals that are being recorded and edited. And then you have the panel, which would be a set of three or more guests that are talking in conversation. And those can, those are, they can be pretty awesome, but they are also more difficult to orchestrate in terms of recording it because you either need one microphone that'll be able to pick up everyone's voice, and then you sometimes get the background noise of the library when you're recording, unless you happen to be in like a little closed off room, like a study room. And But if you're using, most professional podcasters use a separate microphone to record each panelist. And when you use a separate microphone, it'll be recorded as a separate track in your audio editing software and that can make it a little bit more difficult to edit, but it also comes out great in the end. So it just takes a little more practice. And this is one of my favorites for nonfiction narrative storytelling, which would be, so you would use this for telling like an author's biography, or you, you, you would use this to talk about an awesome trip that you went on. And this one is a great one for students or for genealogy stories or for just interested people in the community. There are some awesome genealogy podcasts out there. So if you want to start recording the history of your town or the history of a particular family, this is a great way to do it. That's what I was, that was what I was thinking of that for that one. Um, 
oral history projects that are being done all the time to collect the stories from people before, well, before they pass on. <laughs> um, yeah. that, that would be the same kind of thing. That's awesome. So that was the nonfiction side of things. And then there is a fictional storytelling. There yes. are some awesome um, mystery podcasts that are out there and they're kind of addictive. Uh, there was recently a Simpsons episode that came out that was all about, it was sort of like a mystery podcast parody, but in real life, they're pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So if you have a creative writing group or if you have a poetry group, or if you just have any group of students that are interested in making these, this is a good way to go. Uh, when I was in high school, I actually did a, and this was a while ago, <laughs> But I actually did a twisted fairy tale podcast, and this was before podcasts were cool. <laughs> and then the hybrid version is if you don't want to commit to one single type of podcast, then you can start mixing in different formats and say you would do a solo commentary one day, and then the next week you would do a panelist discussion then the next week you might do like a one-on-one -on -one interview style thing and then you might toss in a genealogy thing later on and this is a helpful format if you have a lot of different people that are interested in podcasting but you don't necessarily have one specific person that might want to do it one single way for the entire time and repurpose content is if you've ever seen like Prairie Home Companion, or if you've ever seen like, um, it's basically a recording of a theatrical production or a recording of like a live radio station. Like if you had a theatrical version of the War of the Worlds that was going on on stage, then you set up audio equipment next to it and recorded just the audio of it to go out and be broadcast later on after the production. And this is great for if you have local musicals that are going on or if you have anything that's really audio centric and that people might just want to listen to when they're in the car or listen to while they're doing dishes or just different stuff like that. And I also pulled up this Medium article because you may have noticed that after every single one of these, there is a set of examples that you can click open and be able to access and start to listen to different samplings of it to get a better idea of how it would work and what you like about it and what you might want to change about it and how you might want to do things differently. And this is all in the guide, which I will share out to you now. And so if you go into the chat here i just posted the link all right so let's hop back in here so now you have a general idea of what podcasts are so now the rest of this is going to be an overview of what you can do in the library to do it yourself so the first the i've separated this guide out into four major steps the first one is planning, getting your ducks in the row. That's more or less about what kind of equipment you're going to be using, who's going to be in charge of doing the different things, and what type of podcast you might want to choose. Then coming up next, after you've had the basic planning done, you'll want to start choosing the actual equipment, which includes the microphones, the audio editing um, software, and any additional equipment that you might want. And then the third part of it will be the actual recording and editing of your podcast before you can get it out there. And finally, to wrap up the process, you'll want to find a podcast host that you'll be able to upload your completed podcast to, and that will help you distribute it out to various different subscribers. And then along with that, putting it out to a podcast host isn't always the only thing that you have to do. You also have to market it and let people know that your podcast exists. So that is the, your last step in making and producing a podcast. All right, so for the planning part of it, I'm going to click open this podcast planning worksheet. 
so there are very there are a variety of smaller decisions that you need to make and on this planning worksheet i have put together all the questions and all the major decisions that you would need to make all in one spot so this is going to be your kind of reference point as you're going through the entire podcasting production so the first thing you want to do is find out why in the world are we doing this in the first place and this first question is also going to help them um, if you need to put a podcast before a board or anything like that to let them know why you're doing this and justify spending on things this is a good place to start and then you'll want to be able first to question there amanda actually is a good question for why do you want to do anything new in your yeah. library um, basically yeah there's there's a lot that this is that was more i think more of an issue when we started a lot of this new uh social things and technology and things that people could do that just because something was a big buzzword or popular and everyone's doing it people said well we should have one too you yeah just jump into it without first doing the planning you've got to plan why what does this have to do with your library your patrons do are they even do they are they even into podcasts <laughs> yeah. or you know any other kind just like with any other social media do your people use instagram or snapchat or is it facebook or is it twitter um i think that's like a huge before you even do anything why yeah all and your staff <laughs> also has to be into it because if your staff isn't behind it then mm -hmm. it's just not going to be kept up it'll be yeah. put pushed down to the last thing on the list and then you might have one or two episodes that go out and then it just kind of fizzles mm -hmm. so keeping together with this why and kind of reminding yourself of that as you go through and keep learning this yeah, will be it helps have buy in from everybody from the top all the way down down yeah yeah and then so after you have sort of a reason why you're doing it then you can start choosing a topic now your topic can be a it can be current event news it can be local history it can be a mystery show it can be murder mystery cozy mystery um we have a million genres in the library pick one <laughs> <laughs> So once you have that topic, then you can start looking around at other podcasts that already exist and then find out who else is doing that topic and how they're doing it. And then you can pluck out various different elements and approaches that you like from that and then kind of start learning from that and start changing things as you go along. And then ask yourself, how is my approach to this topic different from what's already being done and what will make other people listen to my podcast over what's already out there. And if you're doing this for education or just out of curiosity, this is kind of a good, or for career explore, exploration on here, this is a good way to start introducing the idea of market competition too, mm -hmm. because there are a lot of podcasts. If you think about the number of blogs that are out there, podcasts are getting up there. And I know at the beginning of this, I said that there were more podcasts than blogs, but I really don't think that's true. And so then we already went over that article about which kind of podcast exists. This would be your selection point to just pick one which you, that you like, or you can mark a little box next to a couple of them if you want to experiment. And I've also linked over to those to a couple articles that will help you decide this. And these are the same two articles that I put in the major, the main guide. And then this is where you want to start getting accountability together because you're going to start deciding who the host of the podcast is actually going to be. This would, might be the person who came up with the podcasting idea in the library in the first place, or you might be starting a student podcast or a um, group podcast of maybe teens that are coming in that are interested in it. They might not have time or interest to be able to do the entire series all on their own, but you might be able to rotate hosts. So if you have a group of about five teens that want to give it a try, you can have one teen do one episode per week or per month. 
And you also want to find out who's going to be editing all of this stuff. Do you want one person to be doing, be in charge of doing the entire thing? Or if you have a group of five teenagers, are you going to divide it out to, okay, you're going to be the on-air talent this week, and then you're going to be editing next week, and then you're going to be scripting the next week. So do you want one person to do it all each week, or do you want to divvy it out so it's less overwhelming for people? And then you want to ask yourself if you want your show to actually be scripted. And a lot of podcasters actually do script their show because it's easy to go off on a ramble tangent, and it's also easy to forget what you're going to say. So this is also really helpful for beginners that are just getting into the podcasting scene to be able to just have a clear idea of what they're trying to say, make sure you hit all your topics, and not go off the rails too much. And this can be a loose outline or it can be a word for word script. And there are, there's a variety of different ways to do it. And this is more or less one of those practice a few different options and then go with what works for you. And then how often you post an episode if you search for this online, you'll get a lot of recommendations from professional podcasters. But in the library, I would ask yourself, okay, this is what's recommended out in the world. What do I actually have staff and time resources to be able to sustain? Like if I say I'm going to do an episode a week, can we actually do that? Do we have staff and time resources to be able to facilitate this, set up the equipment each time? And is there a slot that doesn't have anything else that's scheduled so that we don't have a lot of audio background that would be bleeding into the recording? So that's just a few things to think about when you're deciding how often you're actually gonna do that. And will you need anything besides just the regular audio recording? because the traditional podcast recording that you think of is you have a standard microphone that's sitting in front of you and you're just recording it into your audio editing software. But you're, there's also, if you've listened to podcasts before, you may have also seen intro music or you may have seen little transition sounds that go between different questions. And if you wanna add any of that, who's going to either find or generate those effects. And there's also free places to go to find pre-recorded audio clips. Um, a popular place is soundbible.com. Um, it has nothing to do with the Bible, it's just a Bible of sounds. And you can find anything from airplanes and zebra sounds to, I found an alien spaceship on there. They have pretty much everything. <laughs> and they also have royalty-free music clips that if you just Google it, you'll find a ton. And that's that's a very important thing to realize, to, to discuss too, is that you can't just use anything. Yeah. As far as music and pictures, there are copyright laws and things that you would need to pay royalties depending on what you try to use. And yeah. looking for things that are like that royalty-free or free to use is what you have to be using. Libraries and copyright just go together. Yep. <laughs> and then another thing you want to ask is, we're going to be putting this podcast out there. Do we want it to be public or privately distributed? And you'll also want to look at the privacy security laws if you happen to be associated with a school, because some schools don't want images or, vo or voice clips of students going out into the world. So you might have to make it private and only available to a certain group of people. So I would ask about that or just consider that for privacy security reasons. And then you'll wanna start thinking about where you're going to market this and distribute it. Because I know I mentioned iTunes and Spotify, but these are not something that you physically upload a podcast to. This is actually a distribution list. So you upload your podcast to a podcast host, and then 
you would get onto the iTunes or Spotify distribution list so that people can search that distribution list and find your podcast. And I put in links to add your podcast to iTunes or Spotify if you don't already know how to do it. And these are also just some kind of recommendations and brainstorm ideas for different ways that you can market your podcast. And then you'll want to start thinking about, all right, so we have a general idea of what we want to do. We have a direction that we're going to do it. But now we need to build like a little, like a learning plan so that we can start building these skills. And you want to start thinking about, is it students who are going to build these skills? Is it staff or is it both? And do we need to start practicing um, out loud conversation skills? Because we don't really think about it. We talk to people all the time, but it turns into a different thing when you're actually talking into a microphone that's going to be recorded and put out into the world. There's kind of a nerves thing that can be going on. And then if you're reading off of a script, you also want to sound natural. So mm. just practicing your spoken word so that you don't sound too much like a robot is kind of a skill that needs to be practiced. Mm. And scripting and writing, sometimes you write a script down, then you try to say it out loud, and then you think, no human being would ever say that on the planet. And then you have to start rewriting it. And so audio recording and editing, I put a skill building tutorial set that's in the planning and the planning guide that we'll go back to in a second and then there's just a variety of things that you want to start looking into to find out do I already know how to do this or do I need to start taking some time to learn it before we really dig into facilitating a podcast and the last thing on here will be the tools so these are just the recommended categories, but we'll go back in here. So now we're back into the main step-by-step -step guide, and I'm going to go into choosing equipment. So we've gone through some of the major decisions that you have to make just in the, plan like in the planning process to make sure that you're not blindsided when you're actually doing the podcast. So before you choose or put any money into buying anything for a podcast, make sure you know what you're doing and what you want your equipment to accomplish. And so you just saw the major categories of the microphone and audio editing software and then the different podcast hosts. So in this section, I put together some recommendations for a beginner that can be scaled up to like an intermediate level. So in terms of microphone, the most common one is the USB cardioid condenser microphone. If you're looking for a specific brands, I put these down at the end. And there are links that just go over, these all just go to Amazon. But if you don't want to use these specific brands, you can start looking up these terms. So this is the actual term that you would copy and paste into wherever you happen to be shopping to make sure that you find what you're looking for. And this is the criteria that you would look for to make sure it has a USB connection or an XLR to USB signal converter. And I mentioned this specifically because if you already know from the start that you are going to use this to scale up to higher skills and you want to expand this out more, you'll want to get this XLR to USB signal converter. And that's because the XLR is what they use in more advanced um, audio editing equipment. So if you've ever heard of an audio interface, this interface is where you would plug in your microphone and that would connect over into a computer. And this would allow you to have more control and just let you do more stuff. So you don't need an audio interface for beginners. But if you already know that you're going to scale up to that point, use this cardioid condenser or one of these that are on the list so that you don't have to buy more stuff later. 
to go to that point. All right, and the next most popular one is the omnidirectional. This one here, the snowball is actually omnidirectional. And there are different software settings so that you can make sure that audio is picked up from the front and the back and more or less from the sides. And this would be able to let you use one microphone to pick up multiple voices. But you would also get more background noise from it. And I have a friend who uses the Blue Yeti. He loves it. Um, it's slightly more expensive, but it, ha it has some clearer sound quality than the Blue Snowball. We tested it. And if you are just getting started, you have no idea if podcasting is the right way to go for you, you just want to dapple in it and dip a toe in, just use a smartphone. You don't need to buy anything else. Just try it, experiment with the process of recording audio and video, experiment with editing, just using the free tools, and then see if you what you want to do from there. And so then the audio editing. I just want to say the, the blue snowball microphone, <clears throat> excuse me. We've been using those <clears throat> at the library because we started purchased one of those uh, eight or 10 years ago for doing Encompass Live, actually. We would have um, people get together to do their presentations in the room. And it's worked great for us. Um, they also last a long time. The one we bought to start with, eight, 10 years ago, oh, we still have. Um, yeah. And we just, re the commission just recently bought another one because more people are doing online things like this and needing to do it from their offices to do remote work. Um, and it's it is great for us. Right here. Yeah, yeah, see? <laughs> and then, so once you've got everything recorded out, you have kind of a baseline of what you want to try. Now you want to grab an audio editing software so that you can add in different features. You can trim audio content so that you cut out the parts that you don't like and keep the stuff that you do. And you can line up the different tracks so that the end result of the audio actually sounds the way that you want it to sound. I've put in some recommended audio editing software. These are free versions that have a lot of different tutorials available for it. I've included a link that goes over to Audacity, Reaper, and Adobe Edition. Um, I would recommend going to Audacity first for beginners because it is free to do. Then I would go to Reaper, which is a low cost option that has an annual subscription. This is the one that we use for the Library Innovation Studios Makerspace sets. So I've already I mostly included it because I already have tutorials for it. So if anyone already asks me, I just can pull it up and send it over. And Adobe Edition is pretty much only recommended if you already have or really like the Adobe Creative Suite. If you don't already have the Adobe Cre the Creative Suite, this can get expensive because this is about $22 a month. It's about $21 or $22 a month, which can kind of add up compared to free. And before you put any money into anything, check to make sure if your podcast host that you choose next, if they already have a basic audio editor that does what you need. And if you have an audio editor that does what you need already, you don't need to invest in anything else. And I've also put in a link to a Musician on a Mission's free audio editing software recommendations because he knows a whole lot more than I do. And then, so you'll also want to choose the podcast host, which will be where you upload your podcast once you have it recorded and ready to go. I've made some recommendations for some different hosts that are, they have a free option. And if you use these podcast hosts, you can start with that lowest level free option. If it works for you, then you can upgrade to a paid version. Or you might find out that the free version is just all you need for all the time. And I've also put in a set of criteria for what you want to look for to make sure that you get the right podcasting host for what you're looking for. 
Um, the major thing to look for and kind of a trap that I've fallen in myself is the bandwidth limits. They pull you in because it's free, but then later on they tell you that, they either tell you one or two things. One, they say that if you have a certain number of downloads on your podcast, then you get charged into a higher bracket. So if you have like 35,000 downloads on your end podcast, you get charged $10 a month. But if you have 40,000, you get charged 15. And so that's one thing to start looking at in your pricing brackets. And if you're just doing a smaller local podcast, that probably won't be a huge problem, but it's something to keep in mind. And the bandwidth limit on top is another thing that I fell into, which was there's a certain cap on the size of the file that you can pull into the podcasting host for per month. Some of these have a cap on it, some of them are unlimited, and some of them you have to pay for unlimited. But if you tell your library board that you're about to do one podcast per week, and then you find out that you've hit your cap of upload file size on the second week, then you either have to go back and tell your board that you planned wrong and that you can only do two, or you have to go up to a paid version. So it's just something to keep in mind for planning in the first place. And there's also integration with the WordPress or a different website builder. And you'll just want to make sure the host that you choose will work with the website that you've got. Otherwise, it can get frustrating. So the biggest thing on here is learning what you need to know for recording and editing the audio for the podcast so that it sounds the way that you want it to sound. And so I put together a set of tutorials that are that match up with the recommendations that I put earlier in this set. And there's also a series of informational tutorials that will kind of help you shake off the newness of how this is all edited together. And I'm going to what I'm going to open right now is the audio term glossary. And I'll show you kind of a fun way to use this. So Musician on a Mission, if you haven't already checked out their site, it has pretty much everything you need to know. They have researched and collected just all the information that beginning audio editors would ever need to know. So as you start looking through these tutorials, you're going to run into a lot of terms and concepts and ideas that are just completely unfamiliar and it can get overwhelming trying to figure out which term will match the thing that you're trying to do when you hear it. And if you read through this glossary and you just need to scroll down till you find the audio terms guide and then you'll get kind of a little primer on the things that you need to watch out for so that you can match up what you're hearing to what you need. So when we talked about microphones, you probably saw this cardioid and then you saw the condenser. This will tell you what that actually means. And this will help you make sure that this is something that you need and that isn't just being told to you. And then when you're searching for tutorials, you'll know the term to look for, like layering, so that you know how to find the tutorial that will help you do what you need to do using the tool that you have. So if you are using WavePad or something that's completely different that you already have in use at your library, you don't need to use the tutorials that I gave out to you. You can use this glossary to find the equivalent to what you need. And so that's the main reason that I put that in there. And for complete beginners who haven't ever touched audio editing equipment before, I would recommend the starter tutorials because these are just, it's a series of YouTube videos that you can run through and just kind of learn what you need to know. And before we move on to here, do we have any questions? 
Uh, we do have a question. Um, so there's a question someone wants to know, is there a way to post your own podcast without a host? Like, is that a requirement or is that just the best way? How? <laughs> so the technically you can, you would have to have a really large server mm -hmm. and you would need to be able to upload it to your server just like you would a, like uploading a PDF that would be posted on your main website. But there is a, like a benefit to using a podcast host and that's because one it takes less time and effort to set up and it will allow you so it has a built-in function that listeners can subscribe to your channel mm -hmm. if you don't use the podcast host then you would either need to build that yourself on your own website or just not have it available so it depends on the type of website you're using so it definitely helps with um, the marketing of it that people can subscribe and then it's got already got some sort of software um, created to for them to automatically no, notify every time you have a new episode. Yep. Yeah. And so, if you're familiar you with that, keep pushing that out and doing that yourself instead of having it be kind of automated by someone else. Um, because, I mean, so you can do it. It just would be more work on your side for some of that kind of stuff. Yeah. And mm -hmm. hosting. Um, audio files and i know from doing the show here audio files video files those are pretty large files they are. and then you have to have some sort of a server that people can keep going to and it has to respond to people wanting to listen to your show potentially hopefully over and over again with many people and that's a lot for you to maintain as just an individual as a library um, yeah it definitely would require probably a more high tech person in charge of that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it depends on who you have on staff that could even, like you said earlier, who's going to be in charge of all of this, what's your, whatever you're doing. You're going to need yep. somebody who will keep that and maintain that and make sure it's working. So yes, you can, but it's a good idea to have, let someone else do all that, have, you know, the hard work. Yeah. Pretty much. Were there any other questions in there? Uh, not yet. If anyone does have any questions, type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface and I can grab that for you. Um, someone did ask, actually, the same person, or way, way at the beginning about the cost, but you've already got that in there that you went to and talked about all the equipment. So, yeah, we got that covered. Oh, and the podcast host, um, free to start, but it can go upwards of five. 10 or even more dollars per month for a subscription. And that's going to vary based on the number of downloads you think you're going to get and the size of the file that you need to upload on a weekly, monthly, or however often you plan to do your podcast. So there might and, end up being some costs at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also mentioned too while we're chatting, because um, someone else is having trouble, like, well, the, the, um, the link to this document that Amanda, the, the her podcasting guide here, uh, we've shared it into the chat, into the questions if you haven't found it yet. Um, we can see some people are in there, which is great, but we'll also have a link to it when I put up the recording of today's show. Yep. So if you haven't gone to it and or haven't grabbed the link within the show today, that's fine. Um, when the recording goes up, you'll be able to click on it right there from the archive page. Yeah. All right, so once you have yeah. chosen a host, and I've also put in, I've sourced tutorials for getting started and setting up, the, doing the initial setup for each of the main popular podcast hosts that are out there. Um, Buzzsprout and Podbean, a lot of them are used for educational purposes. So whether you're part of a public or a school library, those are also great options. And there's also a lot of existing tutorials and projects that are available for helping students through those. So this is a list of tips for how to tell people that your blog actually exists once you've already put it out there. And what I've been recommending to pretty much everyone under the sun is using Canva. So I'm going to open that here. So Canva, it has templates that are already pre-made that will that are optimized for size and pixel size for Facebook, Instagram, and 
pretty much all the major social media platforms. Love so Canva. If you click, <laughs> yeah. I've used it for lots of things myself. <laughs> it is awesome, isn't it? <laughs> all right, so if we click open one of these templates, apparently Thanksgiving is really popular right now. Uh, Not a big surprise. <laughs> But if we click that open and just go to use this template, it'll just let you type in here and change this around. And if you ever you have used just a basic graphics editor or word processor, this will start to look pretty familiar. Mm. And I'll just do a quick demo here, just in case you haven't used it. And they also have some different free images in here that you can switch things out with if you don't like their default down here. Mm -hmm. And then you can just resize it and pop it where you need to go. Nice. And then when, you're, when you wanna share it, you can either download it as a PNG. You wanna definitely use PNG because it allows for that transparency whereas a JPEG does not allow that transparent background to show through in case you happen to have used that in your design. So I just use PNG as a default. And they also have a sharing option so that you can have multiple people working in the same design at the same time. So if you have a team that's working together or if you are doing a workshop for podcasting and you want more than one people to access this Canva tool at the same time, then this sharing process is a good way to do it. Because if you've ever used Google Docs, there is a link that you can share out to let people either just view it or edit it. So mm -hmm. if you do the share a link to edit, copy the link, and then send it over to someone, they'll be able to click this open directly and edit it just like they would a Google Doc. And there's also direct publish buttons if you wanna sync up your Canva to your Facebook account. But enough for the Canva plug, I just use it a lot. <laughs> it's very slick and very easy, yep. Yeah. All right, so if you are looking for other ways that you might want to do this, probably the most popular way is using the teaser trailer. So you can go into Audacity, and then you can clip out a little chunk of your podcast that you've already recorded, and then you can do one of two things with it. You can either put in like a little 10 or 15 second clip that is made available on your website, so that people can click that, listen to it, maybe hear like a funny joke or something that'll pull people in. And then people wanna click on it and go to the real pod, full podcast, or you can turn it into a teaser video. So you can start adding different images and source different image options and pull that over and just, there's a tool that you can use to connect your video with an audio clip. And incidentally, that's also Canva. I'm gonna go into videos. You can upload a little video clip in here. And then there is an option that you can add video narration to what you just recorded. And let me go over here. and here. So now this is the other popular option to doing a, po a podcasting workshop. And this one, I actually don't think I have open already. Let me go in here. So this is a book theme podcast workshop template. 
and this will take you through how to gather the right materials and select the right equipment and you can use the podcasting guide to choose what works for you in terms of a workshop you can use what you've already got or you can gather new stuff and there's a set up the workstation recommendation um, some guidelines for what people already need to know before they'd be able to be successful in doing a podcasting workshop and then it is separated out into different sections so there are a variety of different ways that you can break up doing this in the library and it depends on how comfortable people are with the audio editing software already how familiar people are with podcasting already and general interest level in doing a full through a podcast all in one session the way that i've designed this is that each session takes an hour long and it can be extended to an hour and a half if you have people that are really unfamiliar with the technology and the it's bracketed out so that you cover different skills in each different session and you would start with a major brainstorming topic to get the groups together to figure out what kind of podcast you want to do you would start listening to different snips, snippets of different podcasts then you would have different groups in the you would have the larger group break off into smaller groups and make the case for their own type of podcast that they really want to do and then you would choose a different topic and figure out the angle that you want to do there is a little tutorial for learning how to do script writing and then the end of it would end with a practice reading session so that you don't sound monotone when you do the actual recording and then recording and editing audio is pretty much a session on its own because mm -hmm. this is where you as the facilitator would start demonstrating the different skills that people would need to know and then the practice part of it in the second half of the session would be the learners that are practicing the skills they just saw and applying it to the topic and script that they had just recorded. And then in the third session, it would be this is more or less optional because this is where they would start learning how to use Canva and do marketing. So if you are doing this for a career exploration, you're doing this as a student group or an entrepreneurship group this is also a really good session to add into it just as an option to get the full experience all right and do we have any questions here uh it doesn't look like right now um anybody if anybody does have any questions get it typed into the question section there about anything about running your own podcast or about how to teach one and amanda can answer that for you right now Looks like quite a few people are in the guide itself, so they may be exploring around in the new document you've created for them. <laughs> and that's great. So this guide is it's got pretty much everything that you need just to run through everything. Mm -hmm. So even if you just visit this and revisit it a few times as you get started, it's pretty much all you need. Yeah, awesome. Now, is this something you're going to be uh, linking from somewhere on our commission website? Is there, I don't know if there's a page or a section that's about this I'm or how. I'm building out a makerspace website. So this is going to be converted into a web page. Part of that, okay. So the main thing is just, this is the kind of planning page. This will get converted mm -hmm. out into different buttons that you can click. And mm -hmm. then each of these buttons will go out into a different section. Right. But for now, it's just it's in the Google Docs here for everyone to use. Pretty much. I'll awesome. make this Google Doc downloadable and available once the website's done. But sure. with the actual site, I'll just pretty it up and it works. Yeah. Like you've done with the, you did the um, previous ones that you've put out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Luckily, um, I already have a lot of it coded, so it shouldn't be too bad. Nice. Um, but this is very helpful, definitely. And someone did say, thanks for the information. Your documents look like a wonderful resource to explore. And also, happy yeah. Thanksgiving to all. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> but all in all, I pretty much covered all that you need to know to get started planning, recording, editing, and getting your podcast out there. 
So if we don't have any questions, happy yeah, Thanksgiving. Does anybody have anything, anything you wanted to know more about, a little bit more explanation, or um, anything you were uh, hoping Amanda would mention or talk about that she hasn't yet? Uh, type it into your uh, go to um, questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, while we're waiting, I'll say we, we are, um, oh, here we go, great, yes. So, um, we have a question now. Um, oh, how long does editing usually take? The first time is going to take a lot longer than any time yeah. after it. I would allow for maybe an hour or two for the first edit as you learn the system. Then it'll take anywhere between 20 minutes and a half hour once you get used to it. Once you know what you're doing, yeah, it's a lot easier. Um, a basic edit on a solo or a one-on-one um, -on -one interview usually includes recording your actual audio, adding in like a little uh, music intro, mm -hmm. adding in a little tiny vocal intro that might be about 20 seconds long, um, and then inserting little transition slides. And inserting audio on all of those audio editing platforms, all you really have to do is go to insert media file, find the thing you want, trim it to the size that you need, drag it to where you want it to go, and line it up with the other little snippets of audio so that everything's not overlapping or it's overlapping properly. Once you practice it, I've learned that as I've had to edit um, things for this show and for other webinars I've done, um, it does get easier. Yeah, there's a lot of digging around to figure out what does what, which button, which which feature does something. <laughs> yeah, but it becomes easier. Yeah, and it would depend too, I suppose, on if there's any editing within the podcast you need to do for some reason, uh, like mm -hmm. if something needs to be bleeped out or. Uh, was there dead air for too long a time because of some technical issues and things that need to be cleaned up like that? That's going to take some more. Um, it's going to depend on case by case, I suppose, what happened during that podcast, that recording. And some of the podcast hosts, most of them actually have basic trimming in there. Mm -hmm. So if all you're doing is um, recording it and then trimming out the section, the sections that you don't need, Usually the built-in audio editing is all you need. Yeah, it's pretty standard, yeah. Yeah. And really you could probably get away with just doing that. You might have to do a little bit more in recording and re-recording the initial thing. Mm -hmm. Basically the better the initial recording, the less editing you have to do in the back end. Sure, yeah. And it depends on the patient's level of the person that's doing the recording. If they sit <laughs> down and say, I told you my story, I'm not telling it one more time. <laughs> that's it. You got what you got. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I said, thank you. <clears throat> All right. Any other questions? We are a little after 11 o'clock central time. We did start a little after 10, 10 a.m. central time, so that's fine. We're right on time here for our show. Is <clears throat> any other last minute desperate urgent questions you want to ask Amanda right now? Get them typed in. Um, you can also always reach out to her through our Library Commission website. Um, and I'll as you're using the guide there. here. There you go. Oh. There you have it. Contact Amanda with any questions. Cool. All right. I think we will wrap it up then. Doesn't like anybody typed in and asked anything desperate right now. Um, that was great. We did have a few questions and about um, 
podcasting that's awesome but i think this is a great resource definitely um all the basics you're going to need um i've always wondered a lot about how some of this is done i know how we do our recordings and things here with um encompass live and our things but i know webinars and podcasts are different um so there is some different things to know about doing a podcast that would not be the same as what we do here for our show so i'm glad to learn about it myself as well and right. next month i'll be putting out a video editing guide for i have about six different types of videos oh wow give or take <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. I will learn something definitely next month. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So uh, let's, uh, I'm going to change presenter now to my screen. Take it away. Yep. Okay, a lot of thank yous coming in. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Great resource. Thank you for this session. Um, you made it look easy. Mm, that's good. I try. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, we're happy Thanksgivings, of course. Um, so, uh, let's see, yes, that will um, wrap it up for today's show. I'm going to go back to our main Encompass Live page. Um, as I said, their show is recorded um, and it will appear in our archives here. Uh, so far, if you use your, whatever search engine of choice you like to use, if you just type in the name of the show, Encompass Live, we're the only thing out there, yay, nobody's allowed to use this name, <laughs> and you'll get, you'll find our homepage. The archives, our upcoming shows are here, and the archives, you can see actually, Amanda was just mentioning about video. Um, next month's Pretty Sweet Tech, if you want to come back and join her again, at the end of uh, December, we'll be on video production. Um, but our archive shows go right here, most recent ones at the top of the list. So today's show will be there, and there will be a link to the podcast guide that I've already got over here for myself, so I can add it to the archive. Um, when it is ready and posted to here, everyone who attended this morning and everyone who registered for today's show will get an email from me. I'll email you directly letting you know it's ready. I plan on it because we do have the holiday coming up. Uh, Thanksgiving is tomorrow. Um, the Library Commission is a state uh, agency it is closed Thursday and Friday. So I am going to get this recording up and ready uh, by the end of the day today so that nobody has to wait for me to come back to work or anything next week. So look for that email for me sometime before to the end of the day today. Uh, while we're here looking at the archives, I'll also show you we do have a search feature here. You can search any of our previous shows that have been on here if you want to. We, you can search the full archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want to just find something recent. Uh, and this is because we have added in that uh, limit in time because this is a, if you know, look at this, this is a very, very long page. I'm not going to scroll all the way down. But uh, this is our full archives of Encompass Live since the show premiered, which was in January 2009. So there's over 10 years worth of recordings and archives on here. So if you do look, watch something that is older, just pay attention to the original broadcast date. We do have a date here of when it was originally done. So you'll know how old that information is. Uh, some of the information does stand the test of time, like reading lists and things like that. But some um, shows the services might, no, might have changed, or they might not exist anymore. Links and URLs and resources that we told you to go to and use might have moved or are no longer there. So um, just pay attention to um, when the original date was for when you're watching anything on here. But uh, we will always keep our full archives up here available as long as the internet's out there to do it for us. Um, we are librarians and that's what we do. We do um, archive things and keep things for historical purposes. So our full archives will always, um, always be out there for you. All right, so that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, I'm, you'll see I've got some of the December dates booked. I'm working on the dates that aren't on there yet and into January even starting to get that done. So keep an eye on our schedule for um, it to be filled out. Uh, but I hope you'll join us next week when we will be reading diversely. Um, here in Nebraska, our Nebraska Library Association has a diversity committee and pretty much almost every, every last few years they've done an update to us on um, doing book talks about diverse titles and resources to find more, add more diversity to your library shelves. Uh, Tim Lentz is the chair of the diversity committee uh, at the moment and he's going to be with us um, with also some more of their um, community members I believe and we'll us find out who they are soon um, to talk about um, help you get some good titles for your library shelves 
So please do join us for um, that show next week or any of our upcoming shows. Uh, so thank you so much for being with us. Good to see you again, Amanda. You too. And yeah, thank you everybody for being with us today and have a happy and safe Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye. <laughs>